Hey guys, happy Fabulous Friday. This is Jennifer Jenkins with fabulousstamper.com. I, let's see, there we go. I was gonna say, I wanna make sure I can see what you guys see. Make sure there's, com if I, any comments or anything. Okay, there we go. Uh, I think I'm right on time. Okay, so, Thanks for tuning in. I have the comments. Hopefully the comments will show up as you guys comment. So I have a couple things to show you guys for using the Le Shop paper and this um, stamp set. I have used both and there's the stamp set. Okay. Um, I've used both in a variety of different crafts and you can see most of them I believe are posted on YouTube if not they are all on my Facebook page and so you can see them there and I'll see it candy can share some of them with you so there are so many cute things that I've made the biggest thing that I wanted to share with you guys is the first thing obviously well this is what candy was in love with me about uh, well, she's always in love with me naturally because I'm that cute and adorable. But um, that's, that's, I shall digress on that topic. But, um, but so Candy, I was showing the ladies the other day how um, I had made, I love, my whole thing is I make Disney, you can't see my face, but I wear Disney ears in all of my, I wear Minnie Mouse ears in all of my videos when I can show my face, but like Candy, the setup that I have doesn't really allow that right now. I'm trying to figure out a new setup. Um, but yeah, these are my cute ears. So I wear Disney ears, Minnie Mouse ears in all my videos. So that's my whole thing, is I always make crafts with the Disney twist. So I was really inspired by this stamp set. As soon as I saw the paper and I saw the stamp set, I immediately thought of Main Street, USA, um, Disneyland, Disney World. I mean, that's really what I thought of. It's funny that my brain went to that. So I really wanted to make a Main Street, um, a Main Street card using the Disney paper. So this is the second one I made. The first one I made is a little cleaner. Um, and it's just three fold, you know, three folds. And I just did this one last week. So if you go to Fabulous Stamper on Facebook, you can find, see how I made this card. Um, it's three panels and it was inspired by Sarah Douglas. She had done a card similar to this, um, but it was narrower. Now this card obviously can't be shipped and it really almost should just be an art piece and just kind of sticking up somewhere. Um, and so I used some of the pages were obviously, just, I mean, some of the pieces were clearly just the same as what's in the, on the paper, except I had to trim some of them. Don't be scared to trim some of them to fit what you need, which was a key thing that was hard for me at first because I'm a little OCD. So you see how the bakery has this extra little um, piece coming off? I had to trim it on this one in order for it to fit. Don't be scared to do that. Um, I also added extra layers so that I could make, I really wanted more of my buildings to be two stories because in Disney World and Disneyland, a Main Street buildings are all two stories. Um, and it's just a thing. There's a whole long thing I could go into it. They're all two stories and the windows are named after certain people like Roy Disney has a window and Elias Disney, their father has a window. Walt Disney, I don't think has a window. Um, he has obviously other things named after him, but I think his wife does. And so the windows all have different names. And then I added all these Disney touches to them. And let me hold it up a little bit closer. This one, it turned out like nice and clean. Um, but I also, in order to mash these together, I added greenery. But also in order to make them more Disney, I can't turn on too many lights, you guys. I'm sorry, it's just so hot. It's like 80 degrees in my apartment. It's out of control it's just so hot today so I took embellishments and made them into Disney shapes I took the little light um, post that's in the die cut set and I added the gray uh, matte dots to make the little Mickey head this one I hand drew these ones are um, the sparkle tinsel gems I think um, these are tinsel gems I think too uh, these ones this one I colored I colored these matte dots um, uh, so that I it just 
would look, I colored the vanilla ones because I had a lot of extra vanilla ones. Um, and I just thought that that would be cute. And, um, but I trimmed it. I just don't want you to be scared to cut up some of the pieces. So this was the piece de resistance that I think Candy wanted me to show you. But you see how I added all this extra little trim whenever I could? It is a little bit of a labor of love, I'm not gonna lie. But look at the effect you get when you do add that extra little bit of greenery as opposed to when it's flat. I have another card here that I did this afternoon, which I was what I was gonna lead into, which is just the shapes. This is just the shapes from the flat card. But as you can see, you know what I mean? Look at how adding that little bit of texture next to that, you know, building makes it just pop even though it's not, this one is 3D, this one is 3D, but this one also pops because it has that little bit of greenery and those little matte dots. You know, it, it all just adds to it, you know? So um, I'm gonna talk about this card in a second. So this was my, you can see how I made this whole card in another video, like I said, on Fabulous Stamper. I don't wanna waste too much time on this, but the layering of it is cool to make this whole, actually, I almost feel like you should just frame it I might make a separate one that's like a sampler, you know, where I just frame this one street. Um, now this one is the second one I did, and these are the in-color dots that we had from last year's in-colors, um, the ombre in-colors, you know, the and so those ones are perfectly proportioned as well. The key to these little matte ones is that they were perfectly proportioned to the, the head and if you're a mickey fan or a disney fan you'll know it's kind of hard to get them to where they match so um where the ears match the head and so anyway so um as you can see here i did a lot more mix matching on this one or maybe not yeah so this is the top of this building and i matched it with the bakery okay just because i wanted to have two-story buildings this is the top of this building and i matched it with the bookstore even though it's different you know, like technically, I mean, this could be an awning, you know what I mean? It's not like anyone's gonna be judging the architectural structure of my buildings in my little card. Now these can't be mailed for, these are like probably two to three ounce cards. And they, I don't, um, they, I would probably put them in a, a padded just cause I put so many embellishments all along it. I mean, I just put tons and tons of little dots and look at all the greenery, I even added red I cut out the vines in green, but I also cut them out in red to add just a little bit of color because I thought that was kind of fun to add almost like a flower in there. And here on this one, this is Old Olive, and I just added more of those ombre dots to just add a little bit more color to match the building. Um, this one I couldn't glue down, I had to hot glue it, so it's a little bit more bent. Um, and this one over here, Fleur de Flamingo, same thing, a Fleur de Flamingo vine mixed in with the green, uh, Granny Green, uh, um, Granny Apple, yeah, Granny Apple Green um, vine to, you know, to match together. So I just, you know, there's a lot of potential with the paper. So what I was gonna show you with matching, matching these two pieces of the building, Candy talked about a little bit today, which um, I think you guys, maybe I put those away. Yeah, I think you guys have seen before. So, you know, I could easily match this artist piece behind this piece, because you know, see how that blue matches the blue here? You know, you can see how they would easily match up together, no problem. Um, uh, so that is how I made my cards, you know, to just bulk them up so they had two stories with this one and how I get these pieces is from the edge from the edges of the paper I don't like to waste them you know I don't want to leave any of them off so oh here we go I thought I had them here and someone gave me a trick one time when I was um, watching a video they actually take one sheet of one sheet of each image. So any of the pages that are heavy on images, they'll take one sheet and they specifically use it only for hand cutting, that's it. And then the other sheet that I have that's just like this, I'm only gonna use it for this paper if I want. That way I always have a sheet that's 
you know, available. Cause you know, sometimes you'll start cutting on one sheet and then you'll forget, oh, I, I already cut on that. Now I can't have a full scrapbook page or whatever. So this is just an option of, um, let's call, okay, just checking to see if anyone's commenting. I can't see any comments. I might restart my, just restart my comments here real quick. Um, but the, um, the, uh, you know, so one sheet is just for cutting, hand cutting. The other sheet I will use for cutting card faces. And so I, in my pack here, I have another sheet just like this that I have not cut at all. And I'm gonna use that for card faces if I feel like it, or in the end, I might wind up using it for more of this hand cutting. And it is fussy cutting, um, but you can see, I also have another one that's with the little noodle house and the bakery. Um, and I love the little sandwich board. Um, same thing, I've got one sheet that I've cut up just for that. And I've got another sheet that I've cut up with just the, um, just the bookstore and such. And I save these little pieces on the edge. And I normally don't save all these little like funky little pieces when I'm cutting stuff up. You know, when I'm cutting my, um, t do it using my cards. But with this particular paper, I am because I learned. Um, after doing a pet card that Candy had me do is that this could be on the edge of a card like this. That's what I did for this particular card, which is where I was going. I was just got a little distracted by shiny things and talking about paper. Um, so um, let me see. There we go. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Oh, good. Now comments are coming through. Okay, cool. Sorry, I wasn't responding. I couldn't see any. Um, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Thanks, Grace. I'm glad you guys think um, are, are getting it because I was like, I hope people are on here. I see like six people watching and I couldn't see any comments. I'm like, I know some of my friends have got a comment. I know Grace loves me. And so, <laughs> so anyway, so, um, but so I, this one fussy cut piece, I'm going to use this probably later on another card as the excess, right? These are the like background piece. I want to highlight the ice cream page. And this was this little bakery piece here, or ice cream, is like was like this artist piece, or or, or see even um, yeah, like even like this one for example. This is the top of a page, so this was the very top of a twelve by twelve. Well, this came off another piece, so here you go. I can now take my extra scrap that I found at the bottom of the page and I can put it on top of that and redo it or extend it, make it tall. You know what I mean? I can do other things with it, but I can fill in the pieces left, but I also, um, I also can use this in a background over here if I wanted to layer, like make it look like a hillside or something like that. So this particular card, I used this little, uh, this is like the sushi place, was on the right side of my 12 by 12 paper, so I cut that out. And the noodle place was on the left side of my paper, so I cut that piece out. And I, I still had this little ice cream piece. And this piece here, it's supposed to be, yeah, um, yeah. It's supposed to be a full, you know, second floor. But just part of it was at the bottom of the page. Well, I didn't throw it away. And I'm like, oh, I should show people. You can just glue it on top. It looks just like, you know, it's not like a second story. Like this is clearly a second story, but you know how sometimes you'll have those peekaboo little windows at the top that show through. So I thought that still looked cute and no one's even going to really notice. So the other tip I wanted to show you. So here's all my little scrappies and I look, I save even the tiniest ones because you never know if you'll have just that much space. I don't normally do that with my paper, but on this paper I do just because there's so many little pieces or even this window. I could easily cut out this door and this window and, and make it 3D on another card. So that's why I save some of those pieces. Um, and even like this, I cut it off something or it was at the bottom of a page, but so, um, so yeah. So that is that card that I made today. I made this quick one today to show you using not only the tops of cards, like I did here where I took the top off, but you could also use the edges and the other cards, before I get too far ahead, well, since we're on this topic, I'll show you this other piece. So I realized 
that I could also, I made this card today just for candy. Well, partially for candy and partially for me, because let's be honest, crafting is about us and other people. So um, I made this card. This is the sushi place. And as you know, the sushi place is tiny. The little sushi place is just a tiny little building, but I had this little half piece and I was debating on how to use it. And I realized I could ext extend it to make my sushi place a little bit longer or even this one. And so I did it on this one and I just love the layering. And um, right here, I'll zoom in a little bit. So you can see there's a sl the little line, right? Um, you can see that there's the little line here and the chopsticks didn't match, you know, right here underneath the name, uh, the, the nameplate here, but that's okay. I just covered it with a name. I, inst I, I could have used a bigger nameplate, but I still wanted the chopsticks to show a little bit. So I just used the tiny nameplate and I didn't even have to write sushi or anything on it. I just put a Mickey Mouse head because that's cuter. And I just extended the size of my sushi place. So I'm still using the right hand side, the extra scrap, but I'm making the building bigger, you know? So that's still another option. And I was gonna show you how you could do that even here with um, the these two pieces. I, so this piece was a left-hand side of a car of the 12 by 12, right? So this was on the left-hand side, and this is one I fussy cut. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna use it. Well, I could still match these together and there's there you will see a little you'll see the plant will get covered up a little bit but you can hide that and you can also hide the mix match here so let me lay it down let me match it together and I try to make sure that I have just try to look down make sure things look re relatively matched and honestly if I were to put this on a card I would um add a little, you know, I have one of those little plants, you know, I'm sure in here, I know I have a plant somewhere, um, you know, one of the plants that we could cut out with the dye, but I also had one handy, but of course I've dropped it somewhere. But then also here at the top where you have the, the overlap in the greenery, I would just literally put a little piece of the twine, uh, the vines like interwoven together to cover up any kind of stuff that overlaps that top part. And that's actually how I covered up the difference in the levels on the Main Street card, is I added the little vines. Oh, of course, it's not gonna do it while I'm trying to show you. But it is a labor of love, a little bit love, a little labor, labor of love. But you, when you wrap the vines, the the vines honestly will just wrap around each other. You don't even have to like fussy glue. See, you can just get them to kind of wrap around each other. And so that'll hide that top mix mash of the green. And it will also, um, it'll hide the top mix mash of the green, but it'll, it'll also um, uh, just give a little extra texture. And then down here, I would add one of those little plants that I have here. Um, there we go. I would add one of these plants to cover it up. That's exactly what I would do. I would just add one of those little plants. Um, yeah, exactly. It looks exactly like a seam of a window and you just really wouldn't even notice. Um, and so I would just put this little plant in front of this plant here. Actually, you know, we have another plant. It's on the paper here. Oh, here it is. I was like, I had one ready for you guys, but in all my fussing, I would just cut out one of these or cut out two of these and just stack them all next to each other 3D and that'll cover up the seam. You know, so that, that plant will disappear. You won't even notice that that plant was missing. And so, you know, you can add the extra or even adding extra vines or something. There's always some, or even a sandwich board. The sandwich board would cover that or a bench. You know, so you could easily take some of the other pieces and do it. And that's how I covered the seams on the, the bookshop here. I added two buildings together, but I added the vines to cover up the seam between the brick and the white brick, just so that you wouldn't know the difference. Um, and I just did that on, um, so I did that here too on the, the bakery, same thing. I added a little, something about the harsh red against the green 
I didn't like, so I added the vine just to make a little extra design. And so that was how I added more to that. And so for the sushi one, now this is a label that's retired. This was from those little snail boxes we had a few years ago, and this is Candy's favorite color, but how cute is this petal pink label? I don't know what I wanna use this card for. I almost feel like it would be a happy birthday or a thank you or something, because it's kind of random, unless I know someone that loves sushi. Um, and so I just thought it was kind of fun to try it and show you on a finished card what this would essentially look like. Doing it with the ferns, well, is a little bit more labor intensive, whereas the sushi one, I already had this already cut out. I just had to cut out this little baby piece. So it was a little easier for me to make this card. Oh, and this paper is, this striped paper is from Countryside Inn. That's why I had this out for you guys. It's, um, it's the backside, Yes, it's the back side of this one that has the like the medallion marigold, like the blue marigolds on it. So that's the back side of that. I'm glad you guys like these tips. I'm trying my, you know, Candy knows when my brain goes, it like goes wild. So, so that's my tip of matching the buildings. I have a few other things to show you. This particular card here was a stamped card. These last cards are, oh, uh, uh, showing you some of the odd things. Now this one I thought was just super cute and I still made it Disney, but I wanted it, I told Candy about it. Um, I wanted to make sure you guys saw how, um, yeah, use the edge pieces. Sorry, I just wanna look at your comments real quick before I move on. It's just a little slow on my laptop in refreshing. So I'm glad Lori and uh, thanks uh, Lisa Ray. Um, so you see this little acetate on here? This is actually, so we sell acetate from Stampin' Up. Lisa Ray also gave us the genius idea of using, if you don't use this piece of acetate on the back, I, I like how my stamps stick to the acetate personally. Um, uh, yes, it is like paper playing with paper dolls candy. It totally is. Um, so uh, Lisa Ray gave me gave us the idea in a meeting once how you could use this piece of acetate from your stamps as a windows in the future, um, especially from the paper pumpkins and things like that because we get so many stamp sets from the paper pumpkin. I kind of like how my stamps stick to the acetate, so I don't tend to take I don't tend to stick them to the box like people do um, because I I don't know I'm always worried I'm going to lose one. So um, so but you can use that piece of acetate. I, we also sell the acetate paper, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty positive we still sell it. Um, someone can search that for me. Um, but this piece here, you can see the shiny, that is a piece of, remember the old overhead projectors? Well, I used them in my, you know, I used them up until 2011, 2012. Like I genuinely used them. And um, now they're a thing of the past. Actually, one of them caught fire at the, on the base and then the commander demanded that everyone give up their overhead projectors, which I don't blame them, they caught fire. So what I did was I used the dies and <clears throat> I used the dies from here. So this is a window, this is the large window for the bakery. This is the door, this is the door. And this is, um, this isn't a window. Uh, this is a window here. These are the three windows. And so there are this one, this one, and this one are the windows and doors. And they, um, I popped those out of this 3D piece and I added these tiny pieces of acetate and it's just, a, or actually overhead projector. I just, I just measured approximately how much I was gonna use and I kind of kept checking it and I used glue dots to ad attach them. Um, before I popped it up on my dimensionals because I wanted to be able to reposition it and it's kind of hard to make sure that they don't slide with the wet glue and stuff and so per I just use glue dots um, but uh, I actually use the paper pumpkin glue dots which some people hate but I actually like and even look even on the door right here I popped out the door and I added a, a, to, um, an, a sign and I did it on this one, it's in pink. And on this one, it's actually so cute. I even put a little tiny Mickey Mouse like emblem on the pink 
sign so you knew. And then of course I put a little Mickey on the menu and uh, I put little Mickeys in a couple other places, but oh, it's not gonna zoom, I think. Maybe if I put my finger next to it, maybe not. There we go. That little speck is a Mickey Mouse head. You have to look real close. But, um, oh yeah, if I zoom out it, you can see it a little bit. Um, and so, and it's got the little writing, but I cut that off of here and off a scrap piece from here. And this is from the stamp. And I just cut it off and glued it onto the acetate. And so, yeah, but it makes it just look shiny. I didn't make a shaker card, which you guys, I guess they were making a shaker card too. Um, I haven't looked at that thing yet but you could make a shaker card. I didn't make a shaker card. I just wanted the shiny window. I just thought it would be fun to have a shiny window. So I made one. So, okay. So the last thing is I wanted to talk about these weird pages, which I'm glad Candy talked about them in her video because they are weird. These pages are just so odd. I don't, I understand, you know, Stampin' Up has to think, but like, Okay, so this page is not so bad because it has the books, you know, and it has, you know, some flowers and paint. So it actually reminds me a lot of the um, the art um, building, you know what I mean? So it's like, okay, that kind of fits because a little building paint, but they kind of sort of go together. Like they seem window sheets, that's it, window sheets. Um, uh, I was trying to remember what they were called, Candy. Um, but you could also use, like I said, the overhead projector sheets. I still had a box, and so I used those. Um, and I don't think they sell them at Office Max, but they're pretty cheap. Um, it was like a huge box for a few dollars. But um, so, uh, okay, so this at least makes sense because it matches this building a little bit, right? This one isn't too bad. And the back side is kind of cute with the yellow. It kind of reminds me a little bit like yellow brick road. And I'm like, okay. So I wasn't quite sure, but this made me think immediately. Like I told you, everything I do is Disney. Everything I do is Disney. Um, it's my new niche in my Stampin' Up! Almost everything I do. Um, so I decided to make this reminded me of Rapunzel. All the paint made me think of Rapunzel. Well, Rapunzel is purple and gold, or purple in like, it's gorgeous grape and daffodil delight to be technical. Like those are the colors you use. So this is the vanilla satin ribbon with the gold trim. And I colored it with daffodil delight. I braided it and I colored it with daffodil delight. I also had to color uh, I colored the flirty flamingo um, paint um, tube because I needed some purple and there wasn't enough purple on this sheet. So I colored the purple here. <laughs> I know, right? It's so cute, right? Um, and so I colored the purple, uh, the, the, the I, I forget what color this is. This isn't is this boho blue, this real light, light blue? I colored this light book, this brown, uh, blue book that's really light colored. I colored it purple, just added, um, I just had blends. I didn't have the actual markers, but I recommend using markers instead of blends, but this was all I had. Um, I also only had blends to do the paint, but it, it didn't really matter. I don't think anyone even notices that it's blends, but um, unless you're looking real close, like I'm showing you right now. And so I colored these paint tubes and certain ones, oh, like this one had a lot of paint which I liked and made me think a lot of Rapunzel. So this one's my favorite card because it has so much paint and then I have the braid and it makes it, you know, still Rapunzel. So, you know, you compare the two, look at them side by side. This has so much more purple and all I did was add just a tiny bit of color to the almost white spaces so that I could bring in a color that I needed. And so that is something to think. So this one was an easier one to adapt, but this weird, funky one is, is so weird. I just, this, I, I love Stampin' Up! But sometimes I'm like, I don't know what you guys were thinking when you designed this page, but it's fine. Like, it's fine. So to me, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, I'm, I'm with you. I'm on it. Like, I sort of understand where you were coming from, you know. Um, Let's see, where's the piece I wanted to show you? Maybe I put it back, or, you know, here it is. Okay, so 
uh, this piece is so weird. Like, you know, so the sweets here are fine, you know, like, okay, sweets. And even the bread makes me think, okay, bakery, sweets. But then all of a sudden you've got this little noodle sushi bowl. And I just think it's so weird, this little noodle bowl. And it's just an odd, it's just odd. I don't really get it. And I understand, I do know that some people have taken buildings and used it as like a background, but I don't know, it just, it's such a big print. And this seems so small next to the big print. It doesn't match in my eyes. Other people can probably do it and make it look good, but for me, it just doesn't match for my particular taste. So I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm determined to use this. So guess what I did? I, I used it, but I covered up that funky little bowl with the Minnie Mouse head because I was gonna use this paper, doggone it. I'm not gonna waste my paper. If you know me, I'm a frugal stamper and I am not wasting anything pretty much. Um, and so on, in this case, the sush, the little noodle bowl, the ramen bowl was here. And so it was easy to put my Minnie Mouse right in the center, you know, and, um, and then uh, this petal pink ribbon, which is Candy's favorite, I'm sure, um, I thought was a fun little add on. And even though technically this is Daffodil Delight, I loved how the lemon lolly was not an exact matchy match. It just still, I felt like it just looked really pretty next to the colors, especially the soft colors, you know. Um, yes, I just covered up that weird little funky ramen bowl. Why not? And um, and the same thing here, the ramen bowl was really big here. And so I, I, I put the Minnie Mouse, but I didn't like her centered. She looked funny centered. So it was better to make her a little quirky off to the side. Now on these pieces, in my video that I was showing my customers, I was going to use these two pieces, but then I realized there's almost no bowl to cover. Literally, if I put a little piece of ribbon across here, it's going to cover almost all that ramen, so you wouldn't even know it's there. And on this one, uh, you almost don't know it's here either, unless, you know, I, I probably would just cut my paper a little bit smaller to cut off that little piece of ramen. And I wouldn't even bother with this one, because I don't think one, anyone will even notice that it's ramen. Um, so on some pieces, you can get it where almost everything is, you know, because like this looks somewhat normal, like, okay, bakery, food, sweets, you know, although the French bread is not sweet, but, you know, it at least made sense. Then, um, so that was what I did with um, the, uh, to, to use up these papers, these funny papers that are just weird. Um, and God loves Stampin' Up. You know what? I'm a diehard Stampin' Up fan. But sometimes I was like, that paper is just weird. I don't know what they were thinking. But I still managed to make it work. And so, and then this one I made today too because I saw a card similar to this by, I want to say it was Deborah Harrison made something similar. She did it She did it this way and had some other things. But she took the, I, I took this from a scrap. Um, yeah. I took it from a scrap and I had a couple different scraps that had some chunks and um, I had half of a sushi bowl or a ramen bowl. Here it is. Yeah. And so I had this scrap. I'm going to post these in our scrap challenge. Don't worry, Candy. Um, so I had this little scrap of a ramen bowl and I didn't throw it out because I was like, I don't know, maybe I can use it. And I was going to put it right here. So it was used, but I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having the little fork, you know, on it. So I went ahead and I cut out, uh, out of this extra scrap I had. Oh, this is the perfect paper for pavement, just FYI. The backside of the ramen is the perfect paper for pavement, in my opinion. But, so this paper here came from the Inked Botanicals. It's this uh, flower. And I just picked up this color here and I thought it matched this. I don't know what that color is. Um, I guess this is the maybe, it's not Calypso Coral and it's not Poppy Parade. Maybe it's one of the new colors or something, but I don't know, this color is something funny. It's not Calypso Coral, it doesn't seem right. But, um, and it's not Flirty Flamingo, it's like a weird. Anyway, so this backside of this color is um, of this flower paper has the dots. And I thought that matched really well with the the red here, and I took the blue. The um, this is um, blueberry bushel. It is calypso coral. Okay, I didn't think it was, 
but I don't have that ink pad, so that makes sense why I can't see it. Um, and this is a blueberry bushel, and this is, ah, uh, with the print, okay. And this is a Daffodil Delight. And so all I did was, I featured the, the funny sushi bowl from a scrap. And so I'm still gonna use these pieces because these are the perfect piece for like a little piece of, of, um, of sidewalk, you know, or pavement for another card. But I thought it was fun. I cut out these, this piece from here and the fork I cut out from here. And, um, you know, to make sure I'm using all my pieces. And so I'm still featuring it. It's a funny little card. Like, honestly, I can only think of one friend that would get, like, why I would send her a card about noodles, but ramen noodles, but, you know, to each their own, you know? And this one I just think is super cute. I love this one. And of course, I had to add a little mini Mickey Mouse head. I almost added some here, but I just stuck it. I felt like this area needed a little something else. So yeah, so those are my cards. That's all my cards. And I showed you how to make all the funky pieces work to your advantage. See, funky piece and Rapunzel is also a funky piece, but super cute. And so all the funky pieces can work. These are all partial pieces. Now this one's not a partial, but still this was like these extra weird little scraps. That's true, college students do love Grauman. I don't have any college student anymore all my nieces are grown and stuff but yeah maybe that would be funny um and so there we go so those are our basic cards and then of course the you know using the the making the big long samplers but the key is pushing your scraps together make them work to your advantage and then of course my favorite card because it's super colorful is the um there you go Lori now you have a card to make for ramen um, and the acetate, which I thought was just a fun, um, or window sheet, that's at window sheets that we do sell. So we, you can buy them from Stampin' Up, buy the window sheets from Stampin' Up. I happen to have the overhead projector sheets. I don't know how I had a box of them, but I don't know. So, um, so yeah, so you can use every single piece of this paper and that's not always the case. Um, I also did this same, putting the piece, using these extra pieces, um, scraps uh, like this with animals. I learned it from animals. I made a card and Candy will remember, it was the card front like this and I had half of a cat, just the tail of the cat, just their rear. So I put that part of the cat right here I put a full dog right here in the center, and then I had just half of a dog on this end, and I put just him over here. And then just the head I put here. And then just the feet I had sticking here. So the same concept of how you use this with um, the buildings can be used with other prints that we have in the future, same idea. Use those extra half pieces as accents to the a main piece so anyway I'll see if I can find that dog one too I have a picture of it I'm sure but yeah so I'm glad you guys liked all the projects I'm sorry if I rambled on too long candy um that was way longer than I planned oh my gosh look at the time um I am so sorry I just had all these great things to show you and I didn't want to not tell you how to use them so I'm glad I had the opportunity to show you guys and you can see how I made these cards this card and this card all of these were made um yes hues of happiness perfect elizabeth yes perfect lisa um uh, all of these cards i are on fabulous stamper facebook page you could see them all and um I, if you want to know how all the measurements and all that stuff um, I have some of them on my blog as well, but I'm not always as good as updating the blog, but I know these are all on my Facebook page. Um, so if you scroll down, you should be able to find them by their title at the very least. So yeah, so yeah, so there we go. So those are our fun cards. I'm glad that you, um, oh, and here comes Kitty because clearly I'm done. He's decided we are finished. Um, and so I'm glad I could share with you guys all these ideas. Um, and I'm glad Barb, I'm glad Barbara, I'm glad you guys could appreciate it. And I could just show you some other things that would be helpful with using that paper. There's so much we can do with it. Oh, here are the ombre. These were the embellishments I was going to show you, but it's too late now. 
But yeah, these are the embellishments I used. And so, yeah, these are the, oh, matte ink decorative ombre dots is what they are, matte decorative dots. So, all right, well, thanks so much for your time and you guys have a great day. And yeah, Booboosh has decided we're finished. He's, they're like, he's like, it's bedtime. He's like, you're done, mom. I don't know who you're talking to, but it's bedtime. So, yep, so that's the end of that. So thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. And I, <laughs> I hope you guys have a good evening. And um, I will be posting my pictures of my scrap ones, especially, because I want to make sure that I get in for the contest. Yeah, I've got a couple scraps here. So, um, but there's lots of options. So, all right, well, have a good night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, bye.